WWE Fastlane Sunday night. If you didn't watch it, I wouldn't exactly say you missed it. You didn't really miss much. Which is pretty much the same thoughts you can put out there every week when it comes to SmackDown Live that we should now forever refer to as Retarded Raw. Because that's exactly what it is. It is a Tuesday night, two-hour, retarded-ass version of Raw, and not nearly, not nearly living up to the same standards of even how bad Raw is. Just think about that. And you wonder why people talk about hashtag fire road dog. There's reasons for this. You watch this show, it is a perfect embodiment of why the co-branded pay-per-views need to come back. These brand-exclusive pay-per-views must go. They need to kick rocks because these things are trash. More than half, two-thirds, three-quarters of the matches on most of these cards are skippable, forgettable, and for a lot of you lucky enough to not be stupid enough to waste three hours on a Sunday night, they are avoidable. Just like this show was largely avoidable. Kickoff match was Benjamin and Gable and Mojo Raleigh versus Breezango and Ty Dillinger. Because, hey, what more can you say? I laughed when at one point in time, the crowd was chanting at Mojo, you can't wrestle. And I think he said something to the effect of he didn't come to wrestle. Uh, yes, Mojo. I would agree with that assessment. You did not come to wrestle. And of course, after Mojo recently made a character change and was showing something in terms of the promos he was doing via social media and stuff, he eats the pin here because wins and losses mean absolutely nothing. Right, Road Dog? So we kick off the main card with Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev. This is the way we get the Royal Rumble winner hot, is by having him face, arguably, the hottest most over guy on the entire retarded Raw roster. Does anything seem a bit off here? And the way we get the most over guy on the brand over is to have him lose to the Royal Rumble winner. Instead of finding a creative way to maybe have Aiden English help interfere and have Rusev win, that way you have an impetus for a reason going forward. If Shinsuke wins the belt at WrestleMania, which you would think he would, that him and Rusev could have a feud. No, we just kind of throw these guys out there. And to me, my impression of this match was the fans really like Shinsuke, they really, really like Rusev, and really honestly were just okay with the guys doing their stuff and really didn't care about the match because why would they? You don't put Rusev on TV for weeks, and then when you put him on a show, you have him lose to Shinsuke, who I'm sorry on the WWE main roster has been boring as bricks. The U.S. title match between Randy Orton and Bobby Roode is like so many Randy Orton matches now, honestly, in that it's just all about getting to that RKO spot and what that RKO spot is going to be. And this one was really good, and I at least appreciate the fact that it was one RKO and the match is over. I was really honestly surprised that Orton won the U.S. title here, but the way they kind of at the 11th hour were pumping up this stuff, talking about how... He had never won the U.S. title, made you kind of wonder. But now he's won all the major titles in WWE. But the whole time this match is going on, I'm thinking about how these guys should be a heel tag team, some type of two-man power trip, and I would enjoy the hell out of it. And then, of course, Jinder Mahal comes out after doing the stupid, I'm going to stand at an angle and watch the TV because that's what normal people do, crap. He comes out, and he gets hit. He gets hit again. He takes finishers, and... <sighs> a triple threat for the U.S. title at WrestleMania. <laughs> now, I have to say, Becky Lynch looks so much better now that she kind of cleaned up her look a little bit. I'm still not feeling the fishnet stockings, but we'll take the progress as we can get it. She just looks so much better now. Respectable, decent, clean, cool. As far as this women's tag match... Honestly, the only thing I remember was Carmella winning, and at that point when she won, I'm like, well, maybe they're not going to have her cash in tonight, which it would have seemed like if you're going to have her cash in, this would have been perhaps a good night to have done it. But they didn't do it, and they had other plans for the SmackDown Women's Championship later on in the show. But again, this match is here, it's there, and the only thing I remember was who won, and I don't remember caring. I mean, no offense to the Usos and the New Day, because these two tag teams are really, really good. 
They have found a way to get themselves over and keep themselves over. When you talk about SmackDown, there aren't a lot of entertaining things about it. You've got Rusev, and you've probably got the Usos in the New Day. But of course, because we can't have a full and complete tag team division, we always got to find a way to throw these two teams at each other. And it's slowly, slowly, slowly starting to become a tag team version of John Cena and Randy Orton. You have them wrestle all the damn time, except one-on-one -on -one at the one show that matters, which is fucking WrestleMania. And like, seriously, how many times do we need to see the same damn match? And don't get me wrong, both of them have earned, legit earned, a major WrestleMania match. And ultimately, that major WrestleMania match should be these two teams against each other in some type of two out of three falls match, a TLC type of match, a 30 minute Iron Man match, something like that. And I was wondering as this match was going, I'm like, how do we do this? Are we really going to have the New Day win the belts back so that way the Usos win them at Mania? Uh, how do we get to Mania with these two teams? Well, we found out. We have the two bearded, dirty white boys with the fake-looking foam mallets come out and wipe out both of the teams. So apparently this is going to be your SmackDown tag title match at Mania. We can't even get the Usos and the New Day one-on-one -on -one after all these damn matches on the biggest stage of the year. we got to throw in the stupid-ass Bludgeon Brothers. The stupid-ass Bludgeon Brothers. And I'll say it again. The stupid-ass Bludgeon Brothers. Give me a break. Somebody some bludgeon road dog with his stupidity, although I'm sure he'll claim he doesn't give a fuck. And why you block everybody on Twitter, bitch. Fire. Now, during a retarded Raw pay-per-view, it's only appropriate that we would show multiple promotional pieces, videos, advertisements, teaser clips for Raw. Because, again, SmackDown is the retarded version of Raw. So why not use the retarded version of Raw to promote Raw itself? And you get these packages, full recap of what's happened with Ronda Rousey and WWE and talking about Roman Reigns versus Lester. And if anything, all it does is maybe give you a little bit of a reminder, if you're so inclined, to think, how dumb do I have to be to be watching this pay-per-view? At least it seems like they give a crap about Raw. The non-retarded version. The SmackDown Women's Championship match. Ruby Riot and the Riot Squad being out there. Versus Charlotte. This match wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be, honestly. I thought Ruby, while she had a couple of moments, she was a little bit off. I thought she was better than I anticipated. Um, I actually enjoyed having the interference by uh, the members of the Riot Squad and then having Naomi um, come out with Becky Lynch and then they all get run out. Like, it actually worked for me in this match. It was actually all right. What's not alright to me and what I don't understand is why Charlotte gets so much love from so many WWE fans. I'm sorry. Every time I watch her, I'm just more and more convinced that she's a botchy, manly looking bitch who without her last name, let's be honest, is absolutely nothing. If she didn't have the last name of fucking Flair and so many of you didn't grow up for so many years watching Ric Flair do his damn shoot interviews talking about how great he was, you wouldn't be sitting there and pumping Charlotte nearly as full of damn smoke as you do. And the company most certainly would not be pushing her as much as they do. I mean, I'm sorry. I just don't get it. So then Asuka, after the match is over, comes out. I don't think this is a surprise to a lot of us. She challenges Charlotte. It's going to be her and Charlotte at WrestleMania, hopefully doing something more than just pointing at the signs. I guess this has a big fight feel for a lot of you. Cool. I'm glad you feel like a women's match has a big fight feel. That's refreshing. That's cool. But I do have this concern and I do have this question. Meaning that if Asuka is challenging Charlotte, she's probably going to appear some on Retarded Raw on the road to WrestleMania. Meaning is she's probably going to win this title at WrestleMania. Meaning she's going to stick on Retarded Raw after WrestleMania. Do you really think the WWE has knocked it out of the park with Asuka on the main roster of Raw? What the fuck makes you think it's a good idea to put her on SmackDown? What the fuck makes you think it's even close, even close to a good idea to trust Road Dog with booking her ass?
Like, you're going to trust Road Dog to book this big match at Mania? You're going to trust Road Dog to book Asuka post-WrestleMania? Am I missing something here? The main event as it should have been for this show was the six-pack challenge for the WWE Championship. And I must say, I enjoyed the match quite a bit. Probably in large part because I didn't watch SmackDown the Tuesday before. So I didn't watch Retarded Raw as they sat there and they did that five-way match. Because again, we're just going to copy everything WWE does with Raw and do it in a retarded fashion. Instead of doing a two-hour gauntlet, we're going to do some freaking five-way match. And just, because we got to rip them off. See Absolution versus the Riot Squad. But the match worked for me. Again, because I don't typically watch SmackDown. That's probably why it worked for me. It was cool. A uh, couple of things though. One, we're building to Shane versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Either in a handicap match or a triple threat. Is that where we're going? Really? Really? Like that's the best we've got for Shane McMahon? Oh my god. And are we really supposed to believe that John Cena doesn't have a road to WrestleMania? I think when you look past the pounding down people's throats and everything else over the years, one of the major fundamental problems with John Cena and that character is that you never have anything to get emotionally invested in. You never have anything to believe in because everything is so phony and so fucking fake. Like if you remember back in 2010, he got fired and then he was on Raw every single goddamn week. There was no action, there was no cause, there was no consequence for anything that happened to the guy. It just doesn't matter. So I'm sorry, does anybody in their right mind think that this asshole wasn't going to have a match or a major match at WrestleMania regardless of what happened here? Especially since you know in the next night he's going on Raw and probably challenging The Undertaker at fucking WrestleMania any damn ways. Like seriously. That's why people don't like this dude, because everything about him is bullshit and phony in the way WWE packages and presents him. To me, the most interesting thing about this as I was observing social media during the match was the legit fear that Cena or somebody else was going to win this belt and that the WWE was going to screw the pooch on AJ versus Shinsuke for the WWE title at WrestleMania. I got some uh, morbid enjoyment out of that. But ultimately, the WWE went with what they were going with. They stuck to the plan. And now I'm going to have to listen for the next 26, 27, however many damn days to everybody talking about how this match, by God Almighty, should main event WrestleMania. Have your dreams, have your fantasy match. At least you'll have something to latch on to for WrestleMania because at this point in time, I know me, when I look at this card, I'm still searching for something. But fastly, let this be the end of the brand exclusive pay-per-views because this was trash. Just a boring three-hour version of Retarded Raw is exactly what it was. Your main event where you had a real feeling you already knew who was going to win and so many of the other things are just dumb. It's just dumb, 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 dumb. Your highlight of the night probably was Randy Orton winning the United States Championship and Asuka challenging Charlotte. And that's about all this show had going for it. Let me know if you actually watched Fastlane, and I hope you didn't, because remember, in these type of cases, I watch so you don't have to. Let me know what you thought of the show, and click that subscribe button if you haven't done this so already, and make sure you buy a shirt from the OTRS Central store at Pro Wrestling Tees. But remember, I'm the Schley Daddy, and this is OTRS Central, and it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. We'll see you.